to welcome everyone in here and thank you for your interest in our uh, live session here featuring the wonderful fall apple tart. Uh, so you guys can be in for a treat here. We have Chef Stephanie, who is one of our awesome chef instructors, who's going to be demoing us for today to show you how um, how easy it is to put together and also uh, the kind of stuff you guys would be looking to do coming into the program here. So a uh, little bit about Chef Stephanie here. She actually had worked uh, for Danny Belode in two of his restaurants in Vancouver, British Columbia for the Winter Olympics in 2010. Um, she also is uh, most recently was at a pastry chef at the Art Institute of Chicago, uh, as well as the, the uh, Met in New York City. She is now down in uh, Houston, Texas now. So she's been with us for a little bit here, teaching all kinds of awesome things. She uh, does also hold an associate degree in culinary management from uh, Fanshawe College, as well as a certificate from the in L'Art de Pâtisserie from the French Pastry Art School. And uh, she's been uh, in the culinary industry for 14 years now here. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, hand over to Chef Stephanie and show us what you got for us today. Thank you, Jason. And welcome to everybody that is joining us today. Uh, and it's fantastic to have you. Welcome to my little kitchen. I am going to demonstrate for you today how to make an apple tart. It, it is not just any apple tart. This is a more of, I would say, an advanced preparation, which is always fun. Hopefully gets your creativity going to show you a few things because it is Thanksgiving coming. And, you know, I thought it would be more fun to demonstrate an apple tart rather than just your, um, you know, regular old apple pie. So we will get started. I'm going to explain some equipment to you. And then I've made everything in advance. Um, and I'm going to explain it to you, put it all together. And if you guys have questions, obviously, you know, just pop them in the chat and we will we will answer those for you. Okay. So first. I'm going to show you sort of what everything looks like. So this is a tart and a tart shell um, is baked in various things, but you can bake it in a ring like this and that will produce tart shells like these. So you can see they have nice straight sides, nice bottom. They're not too high. Usually a tart is only about an inch in height. That's kind of the difference between a tart and a pie. Pies are much, much deeper. So this type of shell here is going to produce a tart that looks like this. And the little one just comes from a smaller tart shell. You can buy these tart shells in tons of different places. Amazon has them. They're really fun to work with. You can use all kinds of different doughs. And then once you have this tart shell baked, what's fun about it is that if you bake them, They'll keep for a few days, you know, if you have them in a nice like Tupperware container or something, they'll keep for a few days and then you can fill them and you can kind of like fill them to your heart's content. So we will be working with those. I just wanted to show you those tart rings, but also you could make this tart in something like this. So this is also a tart pan. I love the shape of this pan. It's long, it's rectangular, it's very beautiful. You can see it's got this fluted edge. So that's gonna give the side of your tart a nice little design. And the great thing about this is that it has a bottom. So you don't necessarily have to worry too much. The other ones didn't have a bottom. Um, so you have to be a little bit more careful when using those. However, this bottom also pops out. So that makes removing the tart much easier. So that is fun as well. And this apple tart, you can make in any shape. It's really just going to come down to when you're building it, how you're going to place your apples. So you'll see when I build the circular tarts, we're going to go in little circles. Whereas if you were to do it in something like this, you know, you could line your apples up all the way, you know, down like this. You could do nice rows. You know, this is where you get to be creative and have a lot of fun with this. So I just wanted to show you the tart pans before we got started so you, you could see what that looks like. If you don't have a tart pan and you don't want to buy a tart pan, that is totally okay. So, you know, and if you were to enroll in the program, something that we stress a lot is working with what you have because that's also going to be very important when it comes to working in a kitchen. Sometimes you don't have the budget to buy all of the equipment that you that you want, so you have to work with what you have. 
So if you don't have a tart shell and you still wanted to make this, you could use a pie plate. It's gonna work just the same. It's just gonna have a little bit of a different look and it's going to be deeper so you can actually put more filling into it, which is perfectly fine. So if you have a pie plate at home, if you don't, head on over to the grocery store and there's usually like a disposable section and you can buy like those tin pie plates for almost nothing. So that'll work as well. So not to worry, you can make this no matter what. So let's start with our apples. So these are my apples. They've already be, been processed and cooked. So in your recipe, you, you will get a copy of the recipes. There's a few things you need to make. So you do need to make the apples and you do need to make some caramel and some apple butter. However, if you wanted to change this up and let's say you don't like caramel, you don't wanna use the caramel, leave it out. If you wanted to do like a pastry cream or a custard filling and put that in your tart shell and then have these apples on top, that works as well. Um, you can really play around with this recipe. If you don't wanna use apples and you wanna say use pears, also perfect. So I know these don't look like what we would think of as an apple. What I have done is I've taken my apple and I would choose something that is nice and crisp, like a Granny Smith, a Honeycrisp, a Pink Lady, a Cortland, a Braeburn, something that has a nice crisp interior. Peel it. And then I used a melon baller. If you don't know what a melon baller is, it looks a little like this. Now they come in different sizes. This is a little tiny one. And you can see that this did these little tiny apples right here. And then these guys just came from a melon baller that was much bigger in size. And it's super easy. You peel your apple, you take your melon baller and just round out all of the apple balls and you're good to go. Super, super easy. Don't throw the rest of the apple away. You're gonna notice in that apple butter recipe, you use the entire apple. So all of the scraps that you have from doing this, cause it does produce a little bit of waste. We wanna use those. So save those scraps, use those for your apple butter. Then you're using a hundred percent of the apple and um, then you're not wasting and you're not uh, making a recipe that's gonna cost you a thousand dollars. Once you have your apple balls, you are going to make a caramel solution it's really easy. You're basically just gonna make a caramel with some sugar and you're either going to add water or apple cider. I like adding apple cider because it has spices, it has more flavor, has lots of complexity. And when you cook your apples in that cider caramel, you can see how nice and dark my apples are. They absorb all of that caramel. It makes them this beautiful color. But also if you bite into these apples, they have this beautiful caramel taste. So I recommend using apple cider. If you don't have apple cider, just use water and then throw in some aromatics. So throw in some cinnamon sticks, throw in some whole cloves. If you like nutmeg, throw in some nutmeg. If you like lemon, throw in some lemon. That's where you get to be creative as well. I also put a touch of vanilla in there because I don't think vanilla tastes bad in anything. So those are my apples. This is also called Parisienne. You may have seen in the grocery store little bags of potatoes that look like this. Same, same shape, same concept. This is called a Parisienne. And it's just, you know, a fancy way to shape a fruit or a vegetable. And it's going to give your tart just a really beautiful presentation. So then in my piping bags here, um, this is also called mise en place, and this is something that you'll learn in the course. It's having everything set up and ready to go. So I have my apple butter that I've made, and you can see it's this really nice, deep, golden amber color. So if you are making the apple butter, make sure you cook it so it's this nice, dark color. Don't be, don't be afraid of color. And then I have my dolce de leche. So you could use caramel in this, you could use dolce de leche, you can make your own dolce de leche, you can buy it. There are tons of options. This is super easy to make. It just takes some patience and you need to babysit a little bit. You take a can of sweetened condensed milk, take the label off, pop it in a pan, like something that's gonna cover it. So a deep pan, cover it with water, put it on your stovetop set it to a low simmer 
and just let it sit there simmering away for four hours. And what's happening inside that sweet and condensed milk is full of sugar. And slowly the can heats up, the sugars start to caramelize. And this is what you get. After about four hours, you open the can and you have this really beautiful, beautiful caramel. It's thick, it's gooey. You can eat it on uh, pretty much anything. So it's fantastic. You just have to make sure you don't leave the pot because the water will evaporate as it's cooking. And if the water evaporates completely and you are not there, that's something you, you want to be mindful of. So please don't leave it. So let's, let's build this tart. That's what you need. You need your tart shells, you need your apple butter, your caramel, and then your apples. Chef, we have a question here. Uh, yeah. Lindsay is asking, is there any other liquid that can be used? Um, or is there any other liquid than those two that can be used? So um, I, think, I believe she was asking as far as for between either water or, um, or cider. Yeah, for the poaching liquid. So essentially that's what you're making. You're making a, a liquid to poach your apples in. And when you poach something, you're cooking it slowly so that you can really control that cooking. And so that whatever liquid that the fruit is poaching in, it's going to start to absorb some of those flavors. So, you know, you could use apple cider, you could use apple juice, you could use water. Those are probably about the only things that I would use. Remember though, if you use water, you can flavor it in any way that you want. Um, so you could throw some tea leaves in there. You could throw some citrus peel in there, herbs, spices, you know, kind of whatever, whatever flavor you're going for. When you're poaching different fruits, there are a lot of different liquids that you could use. But in the case of apples, I would just stick to things that pair well with apples. So that's why I suggested the cider, or an apple juice or just water. And then you can you can flavor that any way you want. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So I've already baked my tart shell. So you can see this is fully baked. It's nice, golden, same with on the bottom here, ready to go. Now you can see the difference between these two tarts. This guy here has a nice smooth edge. This one, you can see a little, little rough around the edges. So I'm going to teach you a little trade secret here that I think is genius. What you want to do, because I've already, I've, I've made this one perfect. So I'm going to show you how to make these perfect. So you are going to take a microplaner. So what this looks like, you can use this for like grating cheese, grating nutmeg, grating chocolate, lots of different things. And you are going to use this almost like a nail file to file the top of this edge so it's nice and smooth. So you just want to do it very carefully and just kind of going around the edges. And less is more here, right? Don't don't go crazy at first. You want to just do little bits all the way around the edge of your part. And that is going to smooth everything out for you and make it beautiful. Because let's let's be honest, when you bake a tart, especially when you blind bake it, it's not gonna come out of the oven looking perfect and that's okay. So we wanna take these little extra steps as pastry chefs to pay attention to those details and make everything nice and smooth. So now you can see that that edge right there is nice and smooth and it's just all from uh, this little file that I'm using to, to make that beautiful. So that's how you will clean up your tart and that just makes, whoops, for a uh, wonderful clean presentation. All right, we are ready to start. I'm gonna focus on this big tart because it's just gonna be easier for you guys to, to see. So we are going to take, like I said, that dolce de leche, you could also use caramel sauce here, um, you know, whatever you like, or if you don't like either of those, you can totally admit it, not a problem. So I have it in a piping bag just because I think this application is a little bit easier. If you wanted to spoon this in and spread it out, that is perfectly fine as well. So I'm just going to spread a little bit of this in the bottom of my tart. Doesn't have to be perfect because it is sitting in the bottom of your tart. Biggest thing you want to do here is just make sure that the entire surface area gets full coverage. So I'm just going to take the back of my spoon 
and just smooth that out a little bit into all of those nooks and crannies because I can see that now perfectly smooth. Every piece has a little bit of dolce de leche because essentially when someone eats this, you want every bite to be the same. So that's why we want to smooth that out nice. Resist the urge to overfill these tarts because now we're gonna put in our apple butter, but then remember that on top of this that we're going to add our apples. So really resist the urge to overfill these. Uh, just by your very instinct, you'll want to, but if you fill them too high, when you put your apples on, everything is gonna ooze out. These are meant for an individual serving. So you wanna make them nice and, and clean as possible. So we have our apple butter. I also put this in a handy little piping bag just with a plain tip. And like I said, this is just making it fast, quick, and easy for me to get this apple butter into this tart. Alternatively, you could spoon it in, spread around. That works just as well. But I like to just show you some different ways you can do things to make your life easier. See how quick that was? Apple butter is in. And if you were doing this in a professional setting, you know, in a professional kitchen, you would be using piping bags because you can see how fast that is. You can see how clean that is um, and, and we're done. So that is our apple butter. You can also see, I'm not filling this right to the edge. You can see, you know, there's a probably like eighth of an inch left there because we do need room for our apples. We don't want everything to overflow. So apple time. And this, I love making tarts. You will make tarts in the pastry program. Um, you do that in you know, foundations. And then later on in the program, we do um, multiple different tarts. I love making tarts. I think they're beautiful. I think they're refined. And the great thing about them is they can be, they can be simple and casual, but you can also make them you know, super high-end and fancy as well. So there's so many things you can do with them. And there's so many flavor combinations you can do with these as well. So we're gonna add our apples. So I'm just gonna take each of my apples and there are a number of ways you can apply these apples. You could do just a ring around the center or around the outside and leave the center plain. You can fill the entire top with apples. It really just depends on you know what you wanna do. So I'm gonna put these in a ring. And sometimes this is a little bit of a, of a game is sometimes the size of your apple Parisienne doesn't always fit, but I'm hoping they work perfectly here. Excellent, that made a perfect circle. So you could leave it like this if you wanted to, but I am going to put one in the center there because I just like the way that looks, right? That's finished that off. And then if you want, I did these little guys just to show you, you know, different variations and different sizes that you can do. But this is fun. You could put these little ones in all of these little gaps here, just so you have more apples. It looks pretty cute as well. Now these apples, they are, they are cooked through. But the fun thing about poaching is that you can really control the cooking. So if I were to stick a knife in these apples, which I can actually show you because we have one extra here. So if we're looking at this one, the knife glides through this, you know, effortlessly. And this apple is cooked all the way through, but it's not overcooked. And that's one reason I love poaching because we can control the cooking. So when you bite into this tart, the apples are gonna be soft, but they're still gonna have a tiny little bit of that crispness. So that's gonna give you a lot of wonderful texture. So I am just gonna finish placing these little tiny guys all over the place. And like I said, you don't have to do the tiny ones. You can just do those big ones. All right. So we have our completed part here. Now we need to dress this up because it looks pretty how it is, but we, we want to keep going. We want to make this a little bit fancier. So in this container here, I have a very thick, you can see syrupy liquid. 
So on your recipe sheet, it does uh, say to use apple jam. You could also use apricot jelly for this. Basically, you want a neutral jelly. And what that's going to do is we are going to brush it over the top of our apples here. I'm going to demonstrate that in a second. And that is going to do a few things. It acts as a glaze, so it seals the apples so they don't dry out. But it also provides this beautiful shine. If you've ever seen, you know, in a pastry shop where a cake or a tart has a beautiful shine, it's because some type of glaze has been applied to the top. So like I said, you could use apricot jam, you could use apple jelly, you'll just want to heat it up a little bit so that you get a consistency, something like this, a little bit runny so that it's spreadable. Or what you can do, because I am a huge fan of just utilizing everything that I have, this is a little bit of the poaching liquid. So once you're done poaching your apples, I took a little bit of the liquid out and I put it back on my my heat and I reduced it. And I just watched it, it doesn't take very long. I reduced it until it became this consistency here. I don't know what you would call this. This is thick and gooey. Or you know, when people say it runs like lava, even though I'm not really sure any of us have actually physically seen lava, but that's the consistency that you're going for. So you can just use your poaching liquid and that means you don't have to buy anything else. Pastry brush, this little handy guy here, and we're just gonna dip it in. And we are just gonna gently brush the top of our apples, just gently. It is still a pastry, so you, you have to proceed with caution here. And you don't want too much. If you've ever painted your nails, kind of the same principle here, right? I always dunk my brush and then I wipe it off a little bit to get that extra off. And then I'm just very carefully and meticulously applying that glaze. Too much is going to look thick and gloppy and too much is gonna run over onto your tart shell and it's gonna make your tart shell go a little bit soggy. Uh, not enough is just gonna look like, you know, you sort of ran out of, out of your glaze. So I will hold this up closer. So you can see, it's like, see that shine that it's getting? That is what that glaze is doing. And it's really hard when something looks super beautiful to not, to not wanna eat that. So that's your glaze. That's one of your finishing touches. Now, because you know we're pastry chefs, we're gonna make it even prettier. So again, all of these, these next few steps are optional. If you like your tart like this, just leave it like that. It looks beautiful. You know, it smells beautiful. I wish you could smell it. It just smells like cinnamon and fall and spices. It's fantastic. So you could leave it just like this and, you know, be off to the races. But if you want to, to take it up a little bit, I have some pistachios here. You can see they're nice and green and beautiful and they're finely chopped. You can kind of see that here. You could use any nut for this, pistachios, almonds, pecans, you know, what, whatever you like. And what I'm going to do is just very carefully, I am going to apply the pistachios to the edge of my tart, just by holding it over like this and just kind of sliding those pistachios around the edge like that. So you can see that they're creating a beautiful little edge. The glaze that we applied is also allowing those pistachios to stick. So the glaze is really, the glaze is doing a lot of things on this tart. It's, it's the workhorse of this tart. And you just go all the way around. The pistachios obviously add some color. They're gonna add a little bit of flavor. They're also going to add texture because they're crunchy. When we're cooking, we always wanna go for texture. Our mouths like texture. They like texture and they like temperature difference. That's why, have you ever eaten a, an apple pie, a slice of apple pie that's warm with cold ice cream? It's good, because you get that hot, you get that cold. Same with like this. You're going to get the silky smoothness of that dolce de leche. You're gonna get the, you know, sort of, crispiness of the apples, the crunchiness of the pastry, of the nuts, lots of texture going on. We're gonna do one more thing to this. 
Of course, why would we not? So again, you could leave it like this. This looks, this looks beautiful. But to take this up one more level, we are going to add a garnish. Love garnishes, always add a garnish if you can. Um, garnishes, in my opinion, should always be edible, right? You should never really have to like pick something off then to eat it. You should always be able to eat your garnish. So keep that in mind. This is edible gold. You can absolutely eat all of this. I know it sounds really weird. Um, it's edible, so just, just run with it. I love this stuff. I use it on so many things. It comes in this fancy little book. Um, it's 23 karat edible gold. And it comes in sheets. So I like to, when I use a sheet, I fold it over so I can get to the next sheet. This stuff is very delicate. So if you're using it, you just, you have to be careful. It comes in this little square sheet. It's a very thin piece of gold. You can use this stuff on, on so many things. You can use it on cakes, on tarts, you know, kind of wherever you want to use it, you can use it. And it just adds this like really beautiful finishing touch. I love it. So you can see, I'm just going to be careful. This is what the sheet of gold looks like. You can see I've already used a little bit, but this is how it comes. So you, you have to be a little bit careful with this. And what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to flip this over. One second. Okay, I'm going to flip it this way. This gives me a little bit more control because what's going to happen is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to just take a little piece of it. If I don't, with my other hand, apply some pressure on the top of that sheet, the whole thing is going to come off and I only want a tiny little bit. So I'm with this hand over here with my left hand, I'm putting a little bit of pressure here, right, to hold down the top of that leaf just so I can grab a tiny little bit. And you just want to grab it with your knife and it will crinkle and crunch. This is, this stuff is like very organic. You can't, um, you can't make it do all the things you want to do sometimes. So you just have to go with it and it's okay. And it's also going to act like a glue because then when I put it on my apple, it sticks right to the, right to the glaze. And then I can go back and get a little more and just put these wherever I want. Not really like thinking about it too much, just putting some here or there. They're just little finishing touches. And voila. And if we look close, that's what it looks like. So if you were to present this like at a table or you know, if you work at a hotel and this is on a buffet, the gold just like, it jumps off, it's pretty, it's sparkly, and it's just like a really nice way uh, to finish your, your apple tart. And there we have it, you know? So this is a, a decent sized tart. This is about a three and a half inch tart. So like I said, this is an individual size. However, you know, if this were at a bakery, you could cut this in half and share it between two people, but it's more than enough for one individual dessert. And you don't have to do this individual. Like I said, you could do that really big, long tart. You could do a big circular tart, nine or 10 inches. You just need more of everything. You just need more apples and you can, you know, display them pretty and uh, garnish it however you want. But it's a really pretty fall dessert and something a little bit different than your traditional apple pie, but it still has all of those wonderful flavors. You've got the caramel, you've got the cinnamon, you've got the spices. Um, it's fantastic. I love it. Questions? Well, I think we got a lot of great comments here that uh, that looks incredible there, Chef Stephanie. That looks uh, ready for as I said, looks kind of like a magazine shoot cover there. <laughs> uh, well, cool. Well, thank you. So, yeah, does anyone have any questions then as far as for the tart making process or any uh, questions in uh, particularly for Chef Stephanie here? You guys will be getting the recipes. So you, you will have the recipe for everything. You'll have the recipe for the pastry. You'll have the recipe for the apple butter. You'll have the recipe for the dulce de leche. You have the recipes on how to make that apple syrup, how to poach your apples. And then of course, I just showed you how to put that all together. And like I said, be creative with it. If you don't have apples, use pears. Um, if you, you know, if you don't like the dulce de leche or the caramel, don't use it. 
And that <laughs> apple butter recipe, that is one of my favorite recipes. You guys are super lucky that you came to this demo because you can use it on, you know, pretty much anything. You can use it for apple turnovers. You could use it, you know, if you were serving pork, uh, it is a golden, golden recipe. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie, for, uh, as always, for bringing your expertise here into our uh, live sessions here and creating another wonderful piece of art here for us. No problem. Have an awesome day, guys. All right.